Castellano, and this lecture is about writing a research proposal. There are four areas we are going to explore. First, we define what a research proposal is. Secondly, how do you define your research topic? Then, how do you organize your research proposal? And finally, how do you write a good research proposal? What is a research proposal? It is a statement of intent and it is written for the thesis and dissertation. It provides the reader with a very good reason why research, your research, should take place. At this point, it is important to first distinguish between a thesis and a dissertation. A thesis or dissertation is a discourse, a debate or discussion on a particular topic. More specifically, a thesis is a body of work that is written to fulfill the requirements of a master's degree, while the dissertation is written for the doctoral degree. Both the thesis and dissertation contain a question that needs an answer. But the main difference between the two is that a dissertation should make a significant original contribution to the body of knowledge. In contrast, the master's thesis answers a research problem or question based on previous research or literature. Now, how do you choose your topic and supervisor? It is important that you choose a topic you are passionate about. Research on something you find interesting, for it will be a topic you will be working with for a significant period of time. As for the choice of supervisor, select someone for their expertise and ability to relate to you. Of course, you may not be lucky enough to get a perfect match, but the postgraduate guidebook can help you know the responsibilities expected of the student and supervisor. Once you have a definite topic in mind, the next step is organizing your research proposal. The basic sections in a research proposal are the following. Title of study, introduction, significance of research, the literature review, methodology, which includes the research design and data analysis, expected results, ethical statements, time frame or, time or plan, and budget. And finally, your primary references. Let's look at the title of your study. Your title must give the reader a sense of what you are examining. In other words, it must clearly indicate your topic and encapsulate what you are doing. However, do not make it too general or too long. It should be no more than 15 words and should be catchy and attention-grabbing. The introduction introduces the reader to the topic in question and usually begins with a brief historical overview of the topic. The introduction outlines the general field of interest and shows how your chosen topic fits within it. This section should indicate why you are interested in the study. The significance of research discusses your main aim and the significance of your study. There are two elements you should present at this point. First is the purpose. What is the purpose or overall aim of your research? This should be clearly stated. If there are hypotheses, they should also be stated. You should indicate what objectives you expect to achieve through your study and what specific research questions will be addressed. The second element is the significance of your research. You should be able to show the reader why your research is important and what contribution will your study make to the field of knowledge. Furthermore, it is important to show what are the wider implications or uses of your study to the general body of knowledge. A very important section in the research proposal is the literature review. In most instances, this is written as a separate chapter. The literature review should discuss the relationship of your proposed research to other local and international researchers in the field. 
The literature review serves four main functions. First, it focuses on what has been done before. In other words, you are discussing what major research studies have previously been done, and then highlighting how your study will fill the current knowledge gap. Then, it outlines the instruments you will use in your study, and justifies why such instruments are used over others. Thirdly, it is essential that the literature review points out why it is necessary to conduct your research. And finally, it sets the boundaries for your studies. These are also known as delimitations. The section on methodology and research design discusses in detail how you will collect the data and conduct the research, that is, the method you will use. You should also discuss what instruments or tools will you use to gather data. Whether interviews, surveys, content analysis, case studies, or meta-analysis were used, all these must be clearly detailed in this section. This may include quantitative, qualitative, or action research you plan to undertake. Remember that the choice of method should correlate with your research question or questions. In other words, if the bulk of your research involves interviews and surveys, the research method you use may be of a qualitative and quantitative nature. If your research relies heavily on analysis, then your research method would be more of a qualitative kind. In short, you must be able to show the link between your research question or questions and the data gathering tools you will use. Finally, if the study requires it, include a theoretical or conceptual framework that you will employ. The data analysis should clearly specify how you will present your results and discuss any statistical tests you will use. This section discusses the methods used to prove your hypotheses, if there are any. One tip for this is to deal with each hypothesis separately and mention the analysis that will be conducted. The research proposal has a section that discusses what you think will happen based on your intuition and the exploration and study you have done up to this point. This is the section on expected results. To some extent, you should already have some idea of expected outcomes based on the research conducted in the past. This section answers the questions, what are the possible outcomes of your work? For example, are they positive? negative, or there is no correlation between the variables. Which one would lead to the most fruitful research work, and why? What are your key assumptions, and what are the limitations of working under these assumptions? You may use a pilot study or fragments of other similar research to forecast outcomes. If your research requires human participants to be interviewed or surveyed, you will need to apply for ethical approval from the university to do this. Your supervisor should be able to advise you on whether or not it will be required for your research. This section should briefly discuss the ways in which your study will protect confidentiality, anonymity, and the physical and mental well-being of participants. If animal subjects are used, you will need to get approval from the appropriate Animal Ethics Committee concerned. The section on time frame of study and budget provides a timeline for your research. It lists the times and dates of each step of your research process. It should be as specific as possible, but keep in mind that the timeline should serve as a general guide only. The budget estimate of costs involved in your study need not be too detailed and should list any costs that will be incurred, as well as indicate the source of any funds. Finally, you should indicate the primary references and appropriate texts you initially cited in your proposal. Your supervisor may also direct you towards other essential texts. Never underestimate the value of a good reference list. It should reflect both search and research. This indicates that your research is an activity of finding out by doing. We now turn to 
writing the research proposal. A well-structured proposal is a well-written proposal. Remember to keep your writing clear, concise, and to the point. At every step of your writing, consider the most basic unit, which is the paragraph. Organize your paragraph by following the TEE -E formula. T, have a topic sentence and controlling idea. E, explain, elaborate, or define that idea. And the second E, provide evidence, examples, or illustrations. Avoid long paragraphs of 250 plus words. Remember another working formula, one main idea to one paragraph. Furthermore, keep your sentences simple, one idea for every sentence. Let's look at this example. Research proposals, which are expressions of intent that the research should indeed take place, are not only structured, with about 10 elements contained therein. They are convincing as well as concise rather than obscuring ideas amongst a plethora of excessive words and verbosity. Did you have difficulty understanding the sentence? How about rewriting it this way? Research proposals are expressions of intent that the research should take place. They are not only structured with about 10 sub-elements, they are convincing and concise. They should not obscure ideas with excessive words and verbosity. Finally, we come to saving your work. There are only two things to remember. Save frequently and print multiple copies, and save multiple copies. The proposal is more than a plan. It provides the supervisor and subsequently the staff with the information on which they can approve and or suggest modifications to the research project. A highly explicit proposal provided the research is properly conducted and clearly documented, ensures a higher possibility of the final thesis being accepted. In a good thesis, the following elements can be traced back to the proposal. A distinct contribution to knowledge, evidence of the discovery of new knowledge or the exercise of independent judgment, literary presentation, original work of merit worthy of publication, Evidence of competence in independent research. Understanding of concepts, issues, techniques, and methodology. And finally, critical use of published work and source materials. So what have we covered? We have looked at what a research proposal is. We have looked at how to define your topic. How to organize a research proposal. And finally, writing a research proposal. Good luck with writing your research proposal.